Hello everybody, welcome back. This time, weapons. I'm gonna show you guys how to make the Iron War Axe from Skyrim. This video is sponsored by TNT Cosplay Foam. A great resource, guys, for L200. As a matter of fact, I use their black 8mm L200 foam to make this War Axe. So before we get started, guys, go to my store, download the pattern, and let's build this bad boy together. And here it is, the Iron War Axe. When I got this guy's all drawn out, and for you guys, you just conveniently went to the website and downloaded a PDF file. Now we're gonna make this out of a, being a foam weapon. We need to make an armature. I went to the hardware store, uh, Home Depot as a matter of fact, and I bought an aluminum rod. This is 3 8 inch thick. Now for you people out there, you guys don't wanna spend the money, you can use a wood dowel rod. You can definitely just use wood. And that's fine too. Wood sometimes is a little bit fragile, but I mean, if you guys are just gonna be walking around with it, not fighting with it, you'll be fine just doing it on wood. But my fears, I always have tendency, I have friends that pick things up and break them. So, I'm using an aluminum rod. Now, what I've done is I went ahead and measured the length and put this on a table mounted uh, vice grip, seen here, and took a trusty hacksaw, cut to the length I wanted, and now we're at the length. And when I do with the cutting, I always do a half inch at the bottom and a half inch at top, because this is gonna be foam. You don't wanna have your metal armatures too close to the end, because out of fear of them poking through. So you wanna keep a good distance. And then, as you can see, I went ahead and drilled a uh, 3 16th hole on the top of my, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that right there. Drilled a hole in this because that is for the armature because there's an ax blade that comes out of here. This is foam, this could be dense enough, but this might come out a little bit and come out too far. So out of fear of this wiggling around or being movable, I'm gonna put some armature wire. So I'm gonna, got some armature wire. You can find this at any hobby store. This is a 3 16th thickness of armature wire. Now with the uh, armature wire I have, I put it through the 3 16th uh, hole I drilled in my uh, aluminum rod. Now, what I'm gonna do is, uh, back there's gonna be solid foam. We don't need that armature wire to go back there. As a matter of fact, something sticking out like this underneath foam would be dangerous. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend that like this. Uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna take some uh, grips here real quickly. This is bend that a little bit better than that, shall we? There we go. Now that we got that, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the armature wire and float it right in the center of my blade, like so. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I take some, uh, some dikes and I'm gonna cut them. Once again, when I'm cutting out, I wanna go a little bit further up. I'm not gonna cut on the edge. I'm gonna cut it like about, let's say, let's, let's do about an inch back. Just need, just, we're just putting this in here for stability, see? All right, now I got this bent and got it all adjusted the way I like it. We're gonna stick these two together. And what we're gonna do, some people like to use five minute epoxy or glues. I love to use Pro Epoxy 20. This stuff is a, it's an epoxy that you mix with your hands. It comes in a tube and it looks very much like what it is. I just kind of took a little razor knife and cut a chunk off. And it's got the A and B all together. And you just take the saran wrap off. But when doing this, wear gloves. Now that I got my gloves, pull a little plastic off there and you just knead together. So you'll see the color is like a black and a white and you just keep kneading it back and forth till it turns gray. Also, I've realized before sticking this stuff on, I used to take a sanding stick and it's good to rough the surface up. So I'm gonna take my uh, like a 80 grit sanding stick and kind of rough the spot up really good on both sides because it helps the epoxy stick if there's a little bit of a friction or groove. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand the uh, metal and the uh, armature wire as well. All right. Now as you can see, my propoxy has been properly mixed and it's all nice in a solid gray. I'm gonna, of course, knead that into my aluminum part and I'll get really behind it too. Make a really good contact on this. And that's the thing too, it's a good thing I roughed up the aluminum because it really helps stick it. All right, now that we got that, let's go ahead and give that 20 minutes and we'll come back and start plotting out the foam. Now, with my, um, this is eight millimeter foam I got from my TNT cosplay. I have my ax handle. I'm gonna transfer this over. Now, what I'm gonna do on this is uh, I'm gonna do the handle first, just by itself, not the blade. I have my, since it's black foam, I like to use a silver Sharpie. I'm just going like this. You see right here? There. This, I just wanna get that right there, so. Mm -hmm. 
There you go. Got my handles already cut out. Now what I end up doing, since it's eight millimeter, I want a little bit more. I want to do a handle a little more rounder, so I doubled it up. So I end up cutting four pieces and gluing two together. So I got two, two. So I stacked them up a little bit to make them a little bit thicker. Now I've done that for my armature. I am going to lay my aluminum handle up here because what I'm going to do is I want to make room for this handle to fit inside my foam pieces I just cut. So what we're going to do is we're going to trench this guy. So I want to make sure that this armature we have that we cut is going to float inside here. So what I do is I take my uh, silver sharpie. Now, as you can see, there are my lines for the inside. Now, you could probably go back in with the Dremel and cut this out, but what I like to do is take my blade and just follow my sharpie line and just cut, starting from the top where the line is, and just cut it like a little angle in there, right on my line, like so, and I just cut in really nice and deep. There, and then flip it around, sharpen my blade again, and do the same thing on this side, on the other side. Cut a hard triangle and follow the line. Kind of might get a little wobbly or whatnot, but I always like using the blade. But there's no right or wrong way to do it. You can definitely do the use of the way. If a Dremel works for you, definitely stick with the Dremel. So there, as you can see, cut my top right here. And so therefore the armature will drop right on in there. Perfect. So all I have to do is I'm just going to make sure, line this guy up, flip it over, and do the other side. Same thing. Okay, as you can see, I have both my trenches cut out, but I'm realizing too that that propoxy now is a little bit of a it's sticking out. So you have to go in and go and cut that out as well. So I went in and trace that where the propoxy is on both sides. Because what you want to do is when you guys glue this, these two together, you don't want any kind of bumps. So you have to compensate for the uh, stuff inside. So as well, I'll take my uh, X Acto knife, kind of cut in here. Now what you want to do is you want to do a test fit. So I'm going to drop this guy like so. I cut a notch out from my armature wire. Got the epoxy and you're just going to lay it on top. And push it down, double check, make sure it's, yeah, see that's nice and, that's nice and flush on the other side. Yeah, that's going to close up nice when you push it. So good. Because yeah, you want, to, you want to do this before you put glue. Because once you put glue on it and it's, you turn out it's not fitting, you're like, oh crap, you have to go back. So now we got this gun. Let's go ahead and prep this for glue. Now, my technique for gluing an armature, what I like to do is pick the one side. Now, once I do this, while it's still wet, I drop the armature in there. Because it's going to, you definitely just want to do this while it's wet. So the, the armature can kind of sit in there and set in there. And then what I do after that, is then I brush on top of the armature as well too. Okay, I went ahead and put my second coat of barge. So Two coats on both sides of barge, ready to go. Dry, tacky to the touch. Now when applying this on, it's nice to have the armature in there, it's gonna keep this nice and straight for us. So just flip it over and line up on top, like so. <clears throat> All right, there it is, the handle. I know it doesn't look like much, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this all rounded. Now, granted, you guys have a belt sander, you can definitely do that. I have a Dremel, but what I like to do before I start doing that, take my knife and just take the corners off of it really quick. Kind of like knock down some of the work. So I go ahead and take the, take the corners off of the knife. Because you know it's just gonna, you're gonna run, dremel it down anyway. So I try to take the majority of the work out of it by just cutting the edge off, the corners. There it is. See it helps knock it down, most of it. And now I do that, I go back in with my dremel. All right. <clears throat> As you can see, I went ahead went over the Dremel and ground everything off. Now what I like to do is I like to kind of, by doing all that, to smooth everything together, I uh, take my itty grit sandpaper and my homemade uh, sanding stick right here. If you guys are watching my video for the first time, I have a video called Tools of the Trade where I show all my uh, foam equipment tools I like to use and also how I go about making sanding sticks. Now the sanding stick comes in handy because what you do, even though you Dremel this off, going back over with a sanding stick with that itty grit sandpaper, really takes, it kind of evens everything out. Moving on to 120. All right, now 
We went through with 120 and that's actually good enough because this handle is going to be a wood handle. So it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, but I want it to be relatively smooth. Now our next step is I'm going to heat seal this. Now I like to use my torch with the handle on here. If you guys want to get one of these, you can get on my link below the video. Also, but if you guys don't want to use a heat gun, it is a little intimidating, I agree. You can still yet, um, <laughs> sorry, torch. You can still use your heat gun if you're not, if you don't want to use the torch, it is a little scary. But you can definitely use your heat gun for the same tech. I, the reason I like the torch because it's faster and uh, it just melts a little bit quicker. So I'm just all about the speed. So here we go. Oop, turn it on. There it is, all nice and smooth. Now, what I'm going to do is take this pattern. As you can see, I'm going to lay this back on here because I'm going to put wood grain on here. And I'm only going to put the wood grain where I know it's going to show. The handle's going to be, so there's no need to put you know, wood lines on something that you're not going to see. So I'm just making some marks here so I know it's going to go here. And on the axe head, I'd say about there. There you go. Now our next step is to go ahead and get the wood burner and I'm going to start doing some uh, little grooves in there to make it look like wood. All right, let me show you like my little trick I like to do for wood grain. Is you don't, when you do a line, just definitely freehand it and kind of put a little sway into it when you're doing it. So it's not perfect, like so. And with the wood burner, the different speeds you go, the different cuts. Like you want the line to be thin, I just go a little faster. So the line will be thin, but not as deep. Here is our, our blade. Now, this has all our detail on it. So what I'm gonna do is that this blade stops at this hilt. So what I'm gonna do right now is that I'm going to save all this stuff from my detail pattern stuff later. I just want to know where the, where the blade starts against the hilt and comes off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace this real quick onto a, just a plain piece of paper. We're going to cut our blade out. This time, 8 millimeter foam, we're not going to double up on this. So we're just going to do straight out because I want the blade to be a little thinner than the handle because the gag is it's supposed to be a metal blade. So I'm going to go ahead and trace this onto the foam and cut these guys out. All right, there they are. Got my foam pieces cut, uh, both sides ready to go. Now, before we go any further, I'm gonna take my, now's the way of our pattern for the blade. Before I glue these guys together onto the armature, what I'm gonna do is do a little bit of bevel work on this first before I glue them together. So we'll take our pattern we have right here and just trim this guy out. All right, now this gun, I'm going to lay this onto my foam, the plot where my, uh, my bevels are going to go. But you also realize the, um, the peak of this right here ends at this line right there. So you can line up this kind of a straight line, all right, and then pin it. Okay, I have my pieces all cut up and lined up, ready to be dremeled. Um, I have my um, back pieces cut as well, here as you can see here. Sorry. Also, when working, always make sure you have your diagram with you at all times. Um, you can put it on your iPad, or I have a Xerox copy, and this is just my reference, so you guys can see what I need to do. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and take my Dremel and kind of start taking this down on all the pieces I cut out. All right, make these guys all cut and beveled the way I like them. Now I'm going to prep these guys for mounting onto my handle. And it's gonna be the same thing we did last time is I'm gonna have to trace the armature. Okay, now, with my Sharpie mark, this time around, I'm not gonna cut this, because this foam is really thin, and the, uh, the fear of the, taking the razor blade, I might go all the way through it. So this time, with the stone bit, I'm just gonna follow my Sharpie line very gently, because this doesn't have to go in, it's super thin, so I just wanna do a slight, light, slight little divot for it to fall into. That drops in. It doesn't have to be really deep, just enough. So the same thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and brush barge on this one, on this side. Okay, got the barge. Oh, but also, I want to say, be sure to uh, flip it over and do the other side as well. So do this first. And then we're going to put some barge on this. So Okay, the glue is dry. The moment has arrived. Going to line this up. Right there, dead center. 
Now the other side. Line up nice and flush. Now when laying this thing down, you got to make sure you line up on your seams of the uh, handle on the, uh, on the actual blade itself so it's nice and straight. Now for the back half. I have these guys prepped with glue and luckily there's no armature with this one so I'm going to line my parts up right there on the seam. Okay, now when you get these lined up you'll see like little bumps and imperfections but no worries. We're going to go back and uh, we'll definitely clean it up later. But now we got this. Okay, there you go. Now it's straight. Back up a little bit here, guys. Um, now I have it on here. What I want to do is I'm going to go through here because even though we're follow patterns, there's a little bit of like, if you, look, if you guys see right here, there's a little bit of a lip here on this, a little bit of step, and some spots, little overhangs. So I'm going to go back in with the, uh, the tool here, the little sanding drum. All right, I took the blade, kind of got everything all together. But now, as I was studying the drawing, the design, this edge, it's not just a bevel, it's actually kind of a scallop. It's like a real nice round curve inward toward it. And more, look at it, I really like that. And that's basically what gives the axe the real kind of sharp, dangerous look to it. And so what I end up doing is you can look in the back one, I did that right here on the back end, the little test run, see what it looks like. And it, what I ended up doing is taking the Dremel, starting on low speed and just kind of just going sideways with it until it gets a nice half round. It look, and it just makes it look a really nice, dangerous, sharp edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on these blades as well. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Now I got the axe all curved in, the angles I like. Now I'm looking at this piece. Uh, it's right here, and I'm looking at this. It doesn't seem to be rounded. It's more kind of a rectangle. So what I took my paper pattern right here. Go ahead and cut it out. And of course, where the trim is, this piece here, this is going to be a separate piece we're going to wrap around. So I'm going to go ahead and make room for that. So I cut that out. And I wanted to raise it just a little bit. So I found that I found some uh, 16th millimeter um, craft foam. I got this at Hobby Lobby. It's going to raise it just enough. And I've got a little, um, the 8 millimeter foam I cut in strips and glued on the back. Just like this. You can see right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and that's going to be my piece for this guy right here. I'm going to raise it up just a little bit. And before I glue this on, I'm going to go and take the Dremel and kind of round it up a little bit. Because I always find, once again, it's easier to do the rounding on this before I glue it on. So got all glued up. And as you can see, I went ahead, beveled the edges so it's just nice and close. Got contact adhesive on it. Got my little scallop here for the, uh, the wraparound. But when you glue this on, make sure you put it on nice and it's got to go flush at the top of your axe handle. Just like so. I take my template I have here. Let's go and make a circle <laughs> for where the, uh, the rivet's going to go. Just like that. Okay, I'm all ready now. Take my foam, cut my cap. This is going to go directly on the top of the axe handle. Line this guy up nice and straight. And now, took the same uh, 16th inch red foam and I took the uh, Dremel to it. This is for the... Um, the actual river, you can see, kind of see it's kind of got a little bevel edge to it and a divot in there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I did the bevel with the Dremel before I glued it on. So there it is. Now I got that. I'm going to go ahead and just round, round off the edges on the top here real quick. Take those corners off. And I like to do that when it's actually on the part itself. It makes it a little more uniform. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put my little divot right there with my uh, stone bit. Okay, now, the last little bit of detail, this is trim piece. You guys can see in the bottom there, it's got a little bit of a metal, metal wrap around. So what I'm going to do, looking at this design, I'm going to take a piece of foam I cut out here. I'm going to wrap on there, and it, it has a bit of a line in there. I'm going to wrap it like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take uh, this piece of foam, and take a wood burner, I'm going to burn a line right down the middle of this and then soften these edges of the Dremel and then I'm going to go ahead and just glue this on. So we, once again, I always like to do some of the work before I glue it down. All 
What I do is keep it nice and flush with this part. Kind of wrap it like it's so. Got that. Come around the other side. Bend a little bit. And touch. There you go. There it is, guys. Come along. Of course, we still have to do the um, thin piece of fat foam to simulate the leather. But before I do all that, up here, our next step is we bring back to the stone bit we talked about earlier. This drawing, as you can see, has a really cool texture to it. it looks like, like hammered metal. Now to get that look, little divots in there, we're going to do that with this Dremel. It's a little trick I learned from my buddy Bill Duran over at Punish Props. Granted, we're going to go through with the Dremel and do a little beep, 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 little dents all over this. And granted, there's a lot on there, so this will be very time consuming. <laughs> but this is the full effect that we're definitely going to get. So with that being said, I'm going to pull this guy up. Let us begin. I know, we're right in the middle of detailing. Guys, again, this video is sponsored by TNT Cosplay Foam, a great resource for L200. But don't forget to come back for part two on how to make the Iron War Axe from Skyrim right here on the Evil Ted channel.